At the Nespresso Cup in Portofino, a group of sailing legends took the opportunity to discuss the challenges facing the sport. Mr. Multihull Loic Perron, Triple Olympic gold medalist Jochen Schumann, former America's Cup skipper Francesco De Angelis, and round the world solo skipper Samantha Davis were joined by Emirates Team New Zealand boss Grant Dalton. The Olympics, the Volvo Ocean Race, and the America's Cup were all discussed as the sailors gave an insight into their own personal views on the sport today. The Barcelona is interesting because for the offshore stories, um, the singer indeed like the Vendée Globe, uh, a bit too much of French or some English specialty. And to be able to try, um, at least by a double-ended race, and then decide or not if, it's, if I'm ready or not to do the same alone, that's one way to have other skippers than French guys, and, and to hope one time that the Vendée Globe is going to be win by somebody else than a French one. And also I think it's a way that um, it, it can be an opportunity uh, to, for a young, younger guy to sail with a, an older, more experienced yep. guy. So someone who maybe has not got enough miles or experience to do a single hand around the world race yet, but maybe a very good young Olympic sailor, for example, to team up with, with someone who's got a lot more experience and, and, and a way to bring, bring new people and, and young faces into the, the route offshore single handed race. And uh, in the next Bolboche race, we will have uh, no more than five or six boats. Mm -hmm. At the beginning, of, uh, at the beginning of the 90s, we have uh, the wheat bread with the 15, 20 boats. Uh, is there nothing to discover in the ocean, or is it a problem of money? Uh, the crew cost a lot, a lot more. Ask Grant for that, and uh, and the Volvo, comp a Volvo campaign for sure is a lot more expensive. But the but you have stops over often. That's absolutely not the same story for sure. And, so that's why there are so many differences. I don't know, Grant, why, no, why there are not, not too much boats today in the Volvo. And no women at all. And no women at all on board, yeah. Well, the, the, the answer to the first one is just money. It's as simple as that. Because the boats are so physical now, yeah. they've developed the rule into... They, they into, have developed a rule uh, to... Which is kind of crazy because you could still have a really exciting and interesting and fun race for everybody without without having to have these huge guys. On the IMOCA rule, they were working in Barcelona a day ago, two days ago, on the new rule, and to try to reduce the power of the boats with, to be able to be uh, sail easier, even some, and, but you are not too many women able to, to raise these 60 feet alone, which are quite a big job. And it's going to be a bit easier. But I think even if they reduce the, the power for anyone, then these boats would be. I think the crews, they might not say so now because they're too mature and they won't own up to the fact that it's hard, even for the guy, the big guy. But I think everybody would appreciate it if they, they made physically a, a little bit um, the, less challenging to On say. the other hand, I don't see a need that everything has to be done by men and women. I think we see it in, 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 in other yeah, sports. I agree with that. So agree with that. There are no, that's in my every one sport. because it's my dream race to do the yeah, yeah. red around the world. The race. No, no, I, I think sailing probably is a sport which offers is quite often the opportunity for men and women. Yeah. But in other sports, it's quite clear that, like shot footer, there are men and a man only, and the girls have their own discipline. Yeah. So, and there is a physical stature necessary to be successful, and it is a big boy. If it's not big enough, you won't win. So we can't get to averages and get everyone involved. It doesn't work. So I think we have to say this is a tough race. It's for men, it's for the big boys, and it's really physical. And if you're not physical, it's not sport, you go cruising on a wally, which everyone can do. Pressing a button, that's all the fine. So I think we cannot mix everything and, and everything. Compromise. Everything. Yes, and compromise. And compromise. Maybe one day there'll be enough women to create exactly. our own division in the West. Grant, I have never managed an America's Cup campaign, and uh, now you are trying to manage an America's Cup campaign and a ball watch and race campaign. How you can uh, switch between uh, the, two, uh, the two words? It's just busy. <laughs> really busy. It's not, it's not hard if you've got good people. It's easy. No problem. And what's your feeling uh, with uh, the camper uh, challenge for the next uh, ball watch race? Ah, uh, it just depends if the boat's fast. If the boat's not fast, it's going to be a really long race. But if the boat's fast, it's probably going to be just fine. And I have no idea. It's, 
campaign's gone together well, but I just don't know whether the boat's fast. We'll Are find, you going to we'll sail on them? Me? Yeah. yeah. I'd yeah. like to, but I can't. I got, I'm can't. too busy. And there's a lot better guys than me for yeah. the job, too. We have quite a bit of rebuilding to do based on the destruction that the America's Cup has created in our country. Um, and that's the reason for the tour, is to start to rebuild the, our brand. Um, uh, and also that there's a tradition of the tours with New Zealand Round the World Boats that started with Peter Blake. And, and it all was, you know, the, round, the Whitbread was popular long before the America's Cup, so we're trying to reinvent that process again. And it's been, yeah, I just came from the tour yesterday and uh, I was in Dunedin, and it's gone pretty good. I'm quite happy personally, and um, hopefully I'm not the only one, about this big change. Uh, for the match racing point of view itself only, on the way we knew it till today, I should say from since 20 years, it's going to change a lot of things for sure. It's not the same art. It's what, going to be different. What will be the cause? I don't know even what the cause but will be. I, I don't think After they that, either. they're trying to work it out. <laughs> and Grant knows better than me what they are trying. What they were sailing oh, okay. since two weeks time now. You are they've sailing. Tried, they've, they've tried all sorts of different things. They are testing new course, new to try to simplify. Because for sure, if we try to attract a wider public than the one which is attracted by the lights of the cup itself, only the very very, very small village who knows about the rules of match racing, even, even on board. Each time you flag, you have a look to the jury to, to know if you are right or not, because uh, we don't know exactly what's happening. So I, I guess the goal or the aim to try to simplify might be a good one, but not the, the, the edge or the La Frontière, it's not easy to find for sure. After that, we already try on, on the, the 40s, on the extreme 40s, even on the Clairefontaine Trophy, even with the 60s many years ago, to match, I should say, for sure you can't it's two, three, four times faster sometimes. So everything happens a lot quicker. We need to... So that's... I, I like the way we're going to have to pilot also. Each time you do a mistake, it could... It's dangerous. And it's part of a show also. You have to be careful. You have to finish a race. You have to win it. And then you have to, to learn other skills, complementary skills for sure. Would a Lingi been as fast as Oracle with a wing mass? That's another technical question. Maybe not because we had a lot less writing moment. Yeah. That's the main thing. So we could have won this race if we had the opportunity to race in the weather we were supposed to. We were with what, no wind at all. No wind at all. Exactly. We only had three knots. Yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> six at the yeah, top was yeah. perfect. But no more than that. So everybody was sure that we were supposed to race in no more than our maximum win. But we were absolutely Wow, out, of the oh, out, out of the especially because the course itself well, as we all know was too long that was the hist historical one uh, 20 miles you know so you can't manage five yeah. knots here and, and, and five at the other end yeah, yeah. especially in Mediterranean but next time it's between three and 30 knots so yeah. I read it well huh? yeah the next America's Cup uh, it will be uh, a cheaper America's Cup than uh, yes. the other <laughs> yes. yeah sure yes. When you want to try to sell a new product, you say, uh, first of all, that's a brand new and it's going to be very nice, and it's going to be cheaper. That's the first thing you say. After that, uh, for sure, the price is not a, another story you can pay. I don't know any kind of events everywhere in sports uh, which is cheaper today than, than yesterday. Nowhere. From 2007, the world has changed. And uh, from the 11th out of 12, uh, boats competing in Valencia, eight, eight out of 12 were uh, Europeans. Mm -hmm. After a uh, few years, Europe is not the same, so you could never expect that. And you would expect other countries to be challenged, which is uh, exactly what's happening. So that's... Uh, the Koreans honest. won't make it though. Pardon? The Koreans won't make it. Well, but we're not, not far to have no more, no European challenge too. So in New Zealand we have, um, I think, 10 days of uh, training with the AC45 and they are uh, training, they are test all the, uh, all the stuff. What's your, what's your feeling, uh, what's your opinion about uh, the oh, job the that they are was, doing? It's a, I mean, it's nearly winter, so it was, they, they only had a few days that actually worked. 
from a good sailing point of view, the weather was really shifty. Um, we haven't seen the results yet of the different systems. They tried a do bunch of different ideas course-wise and none of them really looked like they worked too well. The up-down seemed to be still the good old up-down worked quite nicely. With some sides, no? Some, uh, yeah, they did a bit of that. Yeah. Um, they can sail in quite close because they don't have much draft. That's a, that's a definite benefit. I mean, of, you know, no matter what course it is, if you can sail close to the shore, that's a good thing. I, from our point of view, we just it was good for us just to test against other teams and just see how we were lining up, whether we were getting... It's quite hard to learn to trim this wing and actually know whether you're actually... Because we're not testing as such, just whether our, we're cambering upright and all that sort of thing. So I, I guess what we took from it, the courses will be what they are, we can't influence that. But we were more interested in just how we were lining up speed-wise. I mean, you might find that it goes radical for a little bit and then slowly sl drifts back towards the centre. They talk about some uh, big uh, logistic problem for the AC-72 to manage the, the wing sail. You have just uh, think about uh, this, this kind of problem? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, you need a, a 50 metre tower crane, which is basically a crane you'll see on, on a building site, it's, um, which is a massive crane. I mean, you, I don't know whether you can do it with a normal arm crane because the wing can't swing under the arm, so you need a straight. Um, I and mean, we can get those, we don't even have to pay for it, we just borrow it from the local guy down the road who's got a wing, you know. But if you have to buy one or hire one, that's a massive cost. And you need um, guys that, um, some countries you probably got, you got to train for two years to be able to drive them. Or we can train for two hours and they'll just let us drive it, so it's easy. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of logistical issues. Yeah. And I know even in the 45 launching them, and we're enclosed in buildings, you get a random puff and they try and take off on, take off on you in the, when they're in the air. So with a 72, which is so much taller, it's going to be quite difficult just to launch it. Uh, and then you've got to get it off the dock. Do you need a shed? Uh, a big shed I, to get them in. Well, I don't know how we're going we, <laughs> to get off the dock yet. Because you, can't, you don't really work on a mooring. That doesn't really work. That's the other so side there's of a the lot sport. Of it's not about rules and winning. It's all the make it happen yeah, yeah logistically it's uh logistically you've some teams won't even get it you know will struggle to get off the dock i mean honestly they, they'll be that hard we did 20 knots inside the viaduct oh yeah you know and that's just managed to turn it down before we cleaned up a couple of super yachts <laughs> well as soon as you t it's sailing i mean you can camber it out yeah, yeah, or yeah. you can negative camber it but the minute you turn it down it's mm -hmm. off yeah, yeah. It, it ain't, oh, let's get ready. It just turn it, boom, it's gone. It'll rip the <laughs> dock clean off. Huh? Now, maybe the soft sails needs to be possible. Yeah. Well, there's another actually quite side issue that you don't really think about, is if you have an issue when you're out there, how do you get home? Yeah. We had an issue with the 45, just a really small issue just in the striker where the, uh, a, a, a bolt fell out and we lost the tension on the underneath thing. And it was in a nor'easterly, you know, your typical nor'easterly, and so home was down. So you, had the, 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 you know better than me, the most loaded is in the acceleration point to get the bow down. Yeah, yeah. Well, where do you go? You can't get home. No. No. What do you do? You take it a Toto and anchor it for a week? <laughs> I mean, what do you do? As long as you have an island around, I you're still, better than not having it's anything. It's so unseamanship-like. So. It was, if you have any problem at all, you can't get home. You've got to drop the wing somehow at exactly. sea. You, know, you need to, to manage need the way to, to count it, yeah, like they, they were doing on the big one. As you said, entertain, in, uh, entertaining entertaining. Uh, yeah. from yeah. the yeah. defender yeah. perspective. Sure you're going to have a lot of people near the shore. <laughs> well, we haven't, worked out, we haven't worked that one out yet, how you jettison, jettison your wing and get home without it costing you two million euros. No, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not really for the wing. I mean, positive with the wing. That's very interesting technically and everything. But the cup is the cup. You, you don't care about more technology to add some values to the cup. And it's a nightmare in terms of logistics. That's very interesting. It doesn't add too much things. And also, for sure, it's looking like a plane that was very nice. The big one they've done was really amazing. But now that's done. It's already existing. And it's too static also. Nothing moves. Someone asked me the other reason, a question the other day in a, in a speech I did, I couldn't answer. Why do you have front sails on them if you've got those really highly efficient wings? And I actually didn't know the answer to that um, because, um, <laughs> because you, you do. Maybe you don't have Well, C-Class doesn't have them. C-Class doesn't yeah, have them. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to go downwind with just a wing because they try yes. and nosedive. That's one reason. 
But it's, yeah, I thought that was a, what's their answer to that? I must ask the sail makers. They'll have an answer. I think the, the wing will, uh, be, yeah, the, the will be efficient enough to not allow any other sail. Yeah, yeah, but balancing, you, yeah, you just... Well, that's the only difference that I can see in any breeze, is you can bring the bow up as yeah. soon as you stick the genica on. Yeah. To keep a few people in a job. Yeah. It's been the money. Do you think that uh, the, the people are uh, ready for um, a change like uh, the one that is uh, um, promoted by uh, Oracle Racing? Or uh, uh, the people that love the uh, old uh, match racing uh, system uh, will have some, uh, some problem to understand? It depends what is your public, because I think that uh, for all the people who learned the rules of the match race of the old cup they were understanding more about the game understanding the umpire calls and so growing with the sport they might have a harder time watching the next one than the people who would be looking the next one for the first time so then who will then be the public if you look from a certain perspective the sailing community you could argue that the sailing community is small so then you want to open up to a much bigger public, but then you have to understand, you have to uh, vision the right uh, ingredients. Because I think if your public are the very young kids, young kids, uh, they, they don't stay one hour in the same place. They just uh, they watch the two five minutes. Then uh, if yeah, they don't find uh, exactly satisfaction exactly. those five minutes, they are just moving something different. I would say one of the biggest pieces of footage watched in recent history would be uh, X40 China. If, if most possibly the biggest piece of footage ever. That was everywhere. It's a little bit different in the ocean uh, sailing because in the ocean sailing you can uh, follow for three months uh, uh, Samantha Davis uh, with Roxy, uh, Loic Peron, uh, and you can uh, support your, uh, your skipper, your boat. It's not the same in, uh, in the other sailing events, I think. And the problem with sailing is that there's so many sports within the sport of sailing. Yeah. Where's the vision of, uh, of ISAF, what they want to achieve? what continuity they creating with their vision, or are they creating more and more confusion, and basically everyone gets lost, even the sailors. When you ask someone in a sailing club, what are the Olympic classes? I tell you, less than 50% would know yeah. what are the Olympic classes. Yeah, yeah. So that can't be right. When the TV was black and white, you had the America's Cup, you had the Olympics, you had the, the Whitbread, the race around the world, there were some uh, single-handed, and that was it, and then, way, way many, many, many events, then everything gets a little diluted and then it's hard to follow everything. Resources are what they are, so it's the same just spread out and the number goes small. For instance, why at, at the Olympic Games it could be interesting to have some one single indeed offshore race, for instance. You started at the day, the first day of the Olympic, Olympic Games. You come back then? And yeah. you come back, you, know, you, you spend it's all like the week the marathon. Like that? It's like the marathon. Like the marathon. Yeah. It could like be very interesting. The star is no longer an Olympic class. Jochen, what's your uh, opinion? Surprise, surprise. But it's obviously just one more step to, for me, not logic decisions in the, the boat class policy of the ISAF. When you look in the past games where the soling went out, the tornado went out, so a lot of boats which had a good reason and represented a big part of the sailing world with the soling, the match race went out, but the girls' match race came in. So now the girls' match race goes out again, and the last keel boat goes out. So I don't understand that. And not having a keel boat yeah. in the group of the, of the boat selected. Yeah. Uh, I mean, keel boat represents a part of uh, sailing, the and you don't have that part represented in the Olympics. I think, I think it's a shame for the star, first of all, but I think it's great that the women have a, a skiff class to sail in because it's, I think for, for the sailors it's more exciting to sail and it might entice more young girls into sailing because it's something more interesting and fun. What is hard to understand is what is the vision there? How sailing should be represented in the Olympics? So I, I think that brings us also close to America's Cup because I think we see the same problem there. So is sailing for what values it stands? Is it only speed and yeah, action? or the other values. What's, what's ISAF's um, mission statement? You know, what is it, what are they, because uh, it's like, how do you define where it's all going? I mean, what, where's the overall, is there an overall statement? 
the overall goal is to have the, 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 the less and less uh, disciplines. Yeah, they do listen to other people, other requirements, like get the, the weights down 50% women, we need the average weight of 70 kilos. Do you think that the choice of the, to um, uh, put inside again the multi hull is uh, um, linked to the, cho to the choice of uh, BMW Oracle to put the multi hull in uh, the, the America's Cup? If the boat was not considered up to the game before, being not modern enough, suddenly she becomes modern back. <laughs> so first she was modern all the time and I, I'm sure it was related to the fact that represents future of, of uh, sailing, so has to be there as she was before.